Hello and welcome to a fresh new edition of Value Investing Decoded. With me now is Navneet Munot, who has almost about two decades of experience into fund management as well as investing. He's always on the lookout to find new growth opportunities, to find value in the market, and in turn, creating wealth for various number of investors that he has. Navneet, thank you so much for thank taking you. out time for us. You know, just for our viewers, you know, who are trying to learn research, who are trying to identify opportunities, maybe they are very, very initial, maybe they have already tried. Can you just explain them why value investing is so interesting? Buy low, sell high, look at high ROEs. Can you just explain that? So actually the financial theory, theory tells you that uh, markets are efficient and it's very difficult for any individual to beat the market on a sustainable basis. Having said that, there is a history that lots of investors have been able to do that. They've been able to identify securities which could outperform the market. You need to have an investment philosophy which works over a longer period of time, you need to have a right process in place and needs to have a discipline in place where you use that investment philosophy and then thereby you outperform the market. Now value investing again, I mean it's a it's a very generic term since it's, the value is, is like you know is like beauty, it's in the eye of the beholder. Different people have a different connotation, different interpretation of the value investing. In our, our case, we would say that wherever you're looking at in business, I mean the intrinsic value of the business, if you can buy it at a price which is lower than that, then of course that's kind of uh, value investing. If you can buy securities which can do uh, either, I mean from an absolute return perspective, delivers absolute returns, and but more importantly, equally importantly for us, a relative return, beating the market and beating the right peer said that, that that's critical. So there are various ways to identify those securities. I mean, we can, we can discuss more in detail, but fundamental thing is that if you have the ability and the resources where you can identify securities that can do better than the market, that's I think uh, the, the investing. And there is no holy grail of investing. As you said, value investing, the people who believe in, 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 in mean reversion, reversion to the mean, so if let's say a security is trading below its historical uh, valuation, then probably it will come back to the mean. There are people who are contrarian investors, anything that the market is doing and then you have a different belief. There are people who do different kinds of arbitrage or special situations. So there is no holy grail of investing. You need to identify what is your strength and where you can uh, outperform. That will differ from individual to individual or institution to institution. You have a lot of retail investors uh, within your portfolio. What is the you know what is the first part towards getting right investment will the first part of value investing be also about uh, you know getting the right asset allocation between debt as well as equity so from an, if you are asking about an individual investor i think that's the first aspect you need to know why you are investing what is the goal of that investment is it like to buy a house 10 years later is it to accumulate certain savings for your retirement is it that you need to say for your children's uh, education or, or, or marriage at a later date, what is the time horizon, how much risk you are willing to take, risk in this context is the volatility of return, how much downside you can take, so if let's say you are, you are looking at a regular income, then a lot of money should not be in equities because equities may have a huge drawdown, you can have a year where market is down 20, 30, 40%. So depending on your return expectations, your time horizon, your liquidity preference, um, and then the other tax and the and the other personal preferences, you need to design an asset allocation and within that asset allocation buy the right kind of securities. Now of course through a professional fund managers like us, one can put in the right kind of funds which deliver him his return expectations within the overall risk uh, 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 appetite that an individual investor has got. So asset allocation and then staying uh, with, in a disciplined manner to that asset allocation is very important. Before we go into the various stocks uh, or you know the individual analysis of various companies, can you just tell us that you know as far as SBI mutual fund is concerned, what is the philosophy that you follow? You look at quantitatives very closely, also you look at various other aspects like what are the risk related to environment. Can you just explain our viewers about that? You know, so our, our idea is to generate superior risk adjusted return. When I say superior are basically beating the benchmark, beating the right peer set. When I say risk adjusted, adjusted for the risk that you take. I mean if you have a portfolio where there is extreme amount of risk in fixed income, it could be liquidity, interest rate, uh, credit risk and equities, it could be a different kind of risk. 
so risk adjusted returns on a consistent basis with a long term orientation through a fundamental research uh, approach so you basically look at uh, individual companies so we basically run two different kinds of philosophy one what we call a relative return philosophy where idea is to beat the market over a 2 to 3 year time frame which is mostly applicable to large caps where uh, uh, you're looking at a uh, uh, factors like the sales growth margins i mean the the, the momentum in the uh, revenues margins and the profits because you believe that a company that is doing well will will continue to do well you look at the, the market expectations what the market is pricing in versus what are your expectations you look at the valuations uh, compared to their their own history compared to the, uh, the 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 peer set within that industry and then you identify a stock which you think that can outperform the market over a 2 to 3 year period we have another uh, philosophy which is an absolute return philosophy but remember i mean this is in a long only context we we we, we are a long only investor we don't uh, short any security so if market goes down substantially stocks will go down but when you are buying a stock your idea is that it can generate absolute returns over a longer period there the minimum time horizon is 3 years there you are looking at competitive advantage there you are looking at return on equity there you are looking at growth of course you have the qualitative aspect of the management and valuation uh, last but not the least and that, that that's equally important and then you identify a security which you believe based on these parameters can deliver absolute returns uh, from a 3 year plus perspective that is more applicable to mid and small caps right can you you know just start as as a fund manager you have a responsibility to identify good stocks uh, you know can you just start by the process what's the first thing if somebody tells you that you know you want to buy x stock how do you start approaching it is the first thing numbers is the first thing looking at the dynamics of the market how do you approach it so it, it, it sounds like a cliche that you know one should buy good businesses run by quality management good management available at a reasonable value it doesn't that happen easier that. said than done so now how, how what is a good business right i mean a, a business which which generates return uh, on 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 equity or return on capital employed more than the cost of the capital right then only it's a good business now how that happens the company needs to have a competitive advantage right otherwise in a competitive market there would be other players and the overall returns will gravitate towards the uh, uh, cost of capital so company needs to have a competitive advantage in place uh, you need to have as i mentioned about the return on equity at the end of the day as an equity investor what you are looking at is the return on the equity return on on, on your capital we, we can discuss more more, more in, in in detail we need to have growth in that business right so i mean if you are if you are paying valuation of a certain time over a longer period you are looking at this business will keep uh, 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 growing at, at, at a certain pace and you look at the management and as i mentioned you look at the valuation now most important to me i think is is that competitive advantage and where where pre- people i think spend less amount of time the most important is whether the company has got a competitive advantage which is sustainable and whether that i mean in, in warren buffett's language whether that moat whether that moat is expanding or the whether the moat is shrinking and how do you create the sustainable uh, competitive advantage various things a company may have a patent a company may have certain brands which are that's why the customers pay them more company may there, there could be a switching cost where customers find it difficult to move to another product that there there could be a regulatory as to that company it could be a cost leader variety of things that gives a competitive advantage to a company you also have to see whether that uh, business inherently uh, i i i think I'll, I'll i'll talk about the what what i according to me is a very important thing when you look at the industry itself and then the, you you apply the michael porter's five uh, forces the the whether the buyers are more powerful whether the suppliers the the buying power the the uh, suppliers power you look at the threat of the new entrants whether the new entrants will come and the return of equity will gravitate towards the cost of of of, of the capital or the uh, new products that can be substituted and the competitive intensity in a business there could be great businesses some of the business which are growing very fast but the competitive intensity is such that one particular player cannot make money so how do you create that competitive advantage for for yourself return on equity i mean that's the most important thing and when you watch tv you you, you don't hear those right. words too 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 many times return on equity or cash flows i think people pay far too much attention on what's the p or what's the uh, earnings on on a quarter to so, quarter you know, just, basis just just putting this competitive advantage i know you cannot talk about stocks but you know i was looking at your portfolio which is publicly available so something like aisha motors page industries is what you have 
uh, I'm not talking to you to give a stock call, but what, what went through your mind when you were researching about them, when you were trying to make investment, increase the allocation? What sort of competitive advantages did you look at? Different companies will have their different. So you, in, 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 in a market like, let's say, in, in, in a growing economy like India, you need to look at the size of the opportunity and industry which is growing. But when an industry is growing, obviously, there could be several players who could be your competition. Then how do you run your business differently than most of the other, other players? How do you create that uh, brand? How do you create that distribution franchise? How do you create that brand franchise? How do you create a product? at a price where the customers are coming to you and in some of these companies i think they had that value proposition for their customers where they found it difficult to switch to another products right so that's the competitive advantage that a company has which is difficult to break for anybody else look at the history over the last hundred years globally i think the companies that have generated that uh, return on equity on, on a sustainable basis or on, on that, that longevity that comes from the ability of the company to differentiate themselves from most of the other players, which could be a variety of things. As I said that, it could be a technology, it could be your agility uh, uh, in the market, it could be your the value proposition you have, it could be a, somebody could be a cost leader, it's very difficult to beat him, the cost at which he can produce. Different things would be for different people. Side market is, is open to everyone. Right. So, you know, just about, you know, page industries, you know, there were some issues as far as, you know, they're, they're, whether the growth will continue, whether they'll have the competitive advantage. We're getting new competition very, very fast. You know, how do you get convinced? What There, there, there are so many players for so, so long period. This is not in like uh, industry, which is like very, very uh, uh, recent, right? But how somebody could grow much faster than the other people earning margins which are higher than the other people. You're growing market share at the same time, you're, you're growing your margins and then you are surprising the market every quarter, every, every year. So obviously there are some ingredients in the in, in, in the way they, they were running the business that they could do it over a period of time where most of the other players could not do it. It's just like, it's a very small thing. Uh, for example, I mean, having some of the uh, uh, raw material which, which is required producing yourself because you know that the quality of that particular uh, material which goes in the final product is very, very critical for customer to stick to that product. The brand, the way you position it, that when the customer goes to the shop, he asks for their particular brand because you are providing him a value, you are providing him a product which is which he is not finding somewhere else at that price point. So, you know, for a retail... And you're not trying to, every time, ju ju just, ju ju just uh, you know, uh, compete on the price alone because customer is willing to pay you a certain premium because he's seeing that value and creating that perception about that. Uh, I mean, one is a delivering that product and creating that perception about that product, I think, is, is also important. So, you know, that was about looking at the company from an overall view. But, you know, for our retail viewers, you know, sometimes it may be difficult to, you know, find the exact market share and things like that. You know, can they very simply just look at how their lives, their friends' lives are changing? Are they shifting towards new things? Are they changing? At least for the basic start, would that be a good sort of a So large part of the investing is, as, as, as Buffett calls, is a common sense investing. Having a very high IQ actually can go against you. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of it is like common sensical in terms of looking at certain companies, looking at certain management, looking at certain businesses. You get the sense that yes, they, they, they are differentiated, they are doing some right things. But then you need to, you know, need to put, uh, I take lots of boxes. It's not only about something that probably you come across that this industry is doing well. I mean, I, I keep giving this example of the telecom where, let's say 10 years back, had I told you that mobile subscribers in India will go from 10 crores to 100 crores, the data business will grow so much, but look at the companies, I think whether they could convert that market opportunity into profits that could be shared with the minority shareholders, not necessarily because the competitive intensity, the uh, regulatory developments, the benefit went to the consumer, benefit may have gone to the equipment suppliers, benefit may have gone to the government, but not to the company. So the in understanding that industry dynamics is, is like uh, quite important. And then also look at the valuation we can discuss.
Right, so the first mantra is they should have a competitive edge, they should have a decent brand or at least a brand building process and the market should be big and the product should be And good. very important is that focus on the return on equity. So several companies in India particularly and, and I think that's true of most of the other emerging markets where the management's focus on capital allocation, the, 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 the understanding the importance of capital allocation. You have a very good business but uh, in, in, in the looking at the overall drivers of the business and the growth of the business at the end of the day what's most important is the return on equity. So there could be a growth, but if that growth is coming at the cost of putting more capital, if the working capital needs are increasing, which is true of, let's say, lots of, just for example, let's say construction companies or some other companies where you're growing very fast, but then the working capital is increasing or it requires a lot of investment, then as an equity investor, you are not benefiting, right? Because the return on equity is, is, is not improving. So that's very, very critical. At the end of the day, what's important is, I mean, the earnings that you have have the cash flows that you generate and the return on equity that you get as an as an equity investor right uh, so, so just the size of opportunity and some business is growing that alone is is not important so you know we should look at the ROE how, how would you look at uh, you know the importance that management wants to share with its investors we always say that you know management is credible management is of a great quality how do you identify that so th those are the softer aspects, right? I mean, so everybody is, is looking to find the next guy who could probably be, I mean, without, without taking names, uh, the, 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 the next most successful, let's say a, a banker like, like Aditya Puri, what he has done with HDFC Bank. And then again, I mean, if you look at the theory, so let's say the Buffett and Manga, they all say that you should buy a business which is so good that even if, a, I mean, in his words, I'm not quoting it, even if a stupid is running it, it, it should be good and you should look at the business, but not the manager. I think from whatever my little experience, management is very, very important. You look at, for example, we just talked about the banking. I mean, look at the several bank licenses were given. Look at one bank versus some of the banks that had to close down or that had to merge with somebody else. One can say they are operating in the same environment, they have the same regulation, they have the same market, everything is same. Look at, for example, the cement. I mean, classic example, it's a hardcore commodity business. How can you really differentiate from one bag of cement to another bag of cement? Market is like open to everybody, but look at the over a longer period, the growth growth and the uh, uh, ROE trajectory of one company versus the another, I think the management has made the difference. And I think when, when we meet, I think we try to look at the, their vision, I think we'll try to look at the character, we try to look at the uh, uh, the, the intention, the, 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 their intent, the, the attitude toward the minority shareholders in terms of clarity of the thought process, so many things. And the, these are like softer aspects, which of course, I mean, for let's say a large company, which has got a long-term track record, that, that's in the market, you know them. But maybe for a new company, probably, I think you need to assess that over a period of time.